What's up? My name's Technoba here for Troubleshoot, and as promised, I'm back with another video on the HDRP beta for Rust. Currently, it's publicly available in the staging branch through Steam, and if you'd like to know how to activate it, check the description down below. Long story short, the beta became available today, and you're able to download it on Steam using the Rust staging branch over here. Once you have it downloaded and installed, launching it up, you'll probably notice that there's only a few servers available. How do we go ahead and set up our own HDRP backport server? Well, it's incredibly simple, and that's what I'll be showing you today. To set up your own HDRP backport Rust server, all we have to do is A, download Steam CMD, B, download the server, port forward, and then it's basically done. So to begin, where do we download Steam CMD? Well, first of all, head across to the description down below, where you'll be taken to the Steam CMD help page. Scroll down and look for the link that matches your computer. This one over here is for Windows, so I'll open it up and download this zip. There is a Linux guide over here, and further down there should also be a Mac guide. But regardless, once you've downloaded the zip, open it up and then extract the one file inside of it into a folder that you'd like to install a server in. For me, I'll be installing the server on my desktop over here, and I'll call it, say, Rust Server. Drag steamcmd.exe into the folder, close the zip, and open up the folder where we'll be installing our server. Then open steamcmd.exe and you'll see a black window like this. Wait for it to download a couple of files, which is Steam itself. And now that Steam CMD has downloaded and installed, let's get to downloading and installing our server. First of all, we need to log in either with a Steam account or anonymously. For the server, you don't have to log in with an account that owns the game. So I'll type in login space anonymous and hit enter. Once I've logged in, go ahead and enter app underscore update space followed by the Rust server ID, in this case 258550. Then instead of hitting enter, because this will just download the Rust server, we'll hit space, type in hyphen beta, and we can either type in staging, of course if you like a staging server, but what we're interested in here is AUX01, the HDRP backboard branch. So app update 258550 beta aux01, hit enter, and you should see the download starts immediately. Yes, of course, you can enter some extra commands there to choose the folder to install it to, but for the most basic setup, after hitting enter here, inside of the same folder that you have Steam CMD, you'll notice a new Steam Apps folder, then a common folder, followed by Rust Dedicated. This is where our Rust server is going. And of course, because this is the exact same as any other Rust server, all of the tips and tricks and setup guides that you follow for those will probably work here. Though I doubt that things like UMOD and stuff like that will work properly immediately off the bat. They'll probably have to do some big updates before they work with this branch, though I'm not too sure. This video is just setting up a vanilla server for now. So of course, all you have to do here is wait for this download to finish. At this point, once your Rust server's actually been downloaded, you can close out of this window, open up the Steam Apps folder, followed by common Rust Dedicated. Now all we need is something to actually start our server. I'll right click, new, and create a new text document, which I'll now rename something like server.bat, replacing the .text with .bat, clicking yes, makes it executable. If you don't see .text, click view at the very top and make sure that file name extensions is checked. Then right click server.bat, and click edit to open it with something like notepad. Inside of here, we'll simply be entering the block of code from the description down below. It's a very basic server setup. As you can see, it's basically starting Rust dedicated in batch mode, server port 28015, and the archon port is 28016. These are the two ports that will be port forwarding later, among a couple of others. Server level is set to procedural map, server seed 54321, server size 4000, max players 16, Host name, you can make whatever you want, which will be your server's name, server description, and server URL, as well as identity for the map. This doesn't really matter. This is really just to identify this server among different servers located in the same folder. So I'm having different maps in the same folder as this server over here, for example. Archon password, you should change, of course, and Archon Web 1 is just another toggle. So from here, I'll hit Control S, save this batch file, and then open it up to start our Rust dedicated server. In a couple of moments, you'll see the screen over here unfreezes and immediately starts the actual server itself. So at this point, there's different ways of connecting to this. Number one, we can use localhost or 127001 to connect on our local computer over here the same one that the server's running on. For other people to connect to our server on the same local network, i.e. same Wi-Fi network or LAN network, they'll need our computer's IP. We can get that by pressing start and R to bring up this box over here, typing in CMD, hitting enter, and then entering in IP config. Simply looking for the way that you're connected to the internet should show you your IPv4 address. This is what people will connect to on your local network. 
Though, if anyone wants to connect to your server outside of your local network, you'll need to port forward. If you have more than one router between you and the actual internet, you'll need to port forward at every router along the way. TLDR, let's get into port forwarding quickly before we actually hop into the server. So all I have to do is open up my router's configuration page, which of course will be different for absolutely everyone. So to show this nicely in a video, I'll be using my demonstration website that does absolutely nothing. Thousands of people visit here. It's my most visited web page. This web page does absolutely nothing. Please don't waste your time going to it. You need to look up a guide to port forward on your own router. This is just an example. Regardless, when you get to your router page over here, all you have to do is enter the external port and internal port, which is usually the same. Select the correct protocol and enter your local IP. For me, it was 192.168.1.20. Make sure it's enabled and add the page. What ports do we need to add here? Well, of course, we have to refer back to our start.bat file. And inside of it, you'll see the server port and server archon port. So 28015 and 28016. So if you'd like people to archon into your server from outside of your local network, make sure to include 28016 in my case. Otherwise, just port forward 28015. It's asking me to enter a range instead of one separate port. So I'll enter 28015 to 28015 both internal and external. For the protocol, it's TCP and UDP, but if you don't have this option, simply add it twice, once is TCP and once is UDP. Then making sure that the local IP is correct, hit add new and you'll have your server port forwarded properly. On top of this, it's a good idea to port forward a couple of Steam ports in the description down below. You'll find a list of ports that you can port forward too. Though I'm pretty sure people are able to connect to your server with just the server port that we've already port forwarded. So let's go ahead and port forward these ones here. We'll start with just the ones that we can't combine in rules. So 4380 on UDP as such. I'll add to the list. Then we get to a couple of ranges that are sharing things. So 27000 to 27031, which also has the TCP ports up here in it. 27036. 27037, and then we skip up here to 28. So what I'll do is I'll port forward all the way from 27000 to 27037, both TCP and UDP. This makes sure that all of these ports here and all of these ports here are port forwarded. So 27037 is the max, and I'll set it to both TCP and UDP. Add new. Then finally, we have 28015 to 28016, which we of course port forwarded earlier, which is our actual server ports. Awesome. So at this point, we're basically fully port forwarded. And if someone were to use my external IP to connect to my server, they should be able to contact it and play on our server as they would expect. Of course, just remember playing on your own PC, you'll be using localhost or 127001. People on the same local network will be using the IP that we pulled out of command prompt earlier. And people connecting from outside your local network will use your external or internet IP to connect and play on your server. So with all of that out of the way, and our server's actually running now to allow your server through your Windows firewall. Of course, the steps will be different for an antivirus's firewall. Hit start and type in firewall, then click on Windows Defender Firewall, and then finally advanced settings to bring up the new firewall window over here. Inside of this window over here, head across to inbound rules on the left, click new rule, port, next, and inside of here we'll be selecting TCP. Then refer to the description down below for all of the ports that we previously port forwarded, which will now be allowing through our Windows firewall. So you'll see something like this. Copy the entire TCP row up here as such, paste it into the specific local ports, TCP, next, allow, next, all three of these checked, next, and give it a name, say Rust Staging. Then we'll head across to Outbound Rules on the left and do the same. New rule, port, next, TCP, paste it in, next, allow, next, all three checked, next, name, Rust Staging, and finish. Then refer back to the list, and I'll be doing the exact same steps, this time just for UDP. So I'll start with Outbound, New Rule, Port, Paste, UDP, next, allow, next, all three checked, next, Rust Staging, and finally, Inbound Rules. So New Rule, Port, next, paste them in, UDP, next, allow, next, next, Rust Staging, and we're done here. Let's go ahead and connect to it. So I'll push it across to the side, open up Steam, and then start up the Rust staging branch. There we go. Now that we're on the main menu, I should be able to head into play, and you should notice that a couple of servers are missing, though it seems like most of them are here. I'm not too sure if you're able to connect to normal servers using the staging branch or HDRP backport branch. I don't think you should be able to, 
But regardless, to connect to our own server that we've just set up, hit F1 to bring up your game's console, head across to the console tab at the very top, and then type in connect space, followed by the IP address. For me, it'll be localhost as I'm connecting to my own computer. If you don't get anything after you hit enter, you can add colon to 8015, the server's port. Then simply hit enter and you'll be connecting to your own server. If I go out of full screen mode here, push it across to the side, you should see me connecting to my own server on the left hand side over here. Though it seems I've been kicked as I'm not running the correct version of the game. That's a little bit odd. I'll close out of the game and quickly have a look at Steam to make sure I'm on the correct branch, which I should be. I'm guessing the client hasn't started up properly. Let's try restarting Steam maybe. Huh, an update. That's a little bit odd. And there we go. Maybe now it should work properly, I would assume. I guess it just didn't download the correct branch somehow, seeming though I had to install it from scratch. Regardless, now it should definitely work. Heading across to play, the server list is empty. There we go. I think it's working properly now. So I'll hit F1, connect, localhost, and let's see if we can connect. I think I need to put in the port as well. So connect, localhost, 28015. I have to cancel this one first and hit enter. There we go, asset warmup. We should be connecting to the server now. Let's wait for this to finish. We've now connected to our staging branch server. Ooh, that's uh, it's pretty crusty. Let's go into the options quick and pump this up to 11. Or, or one, that, that works too. Let's go ahead and hop into exclusive full screen. Crank that limit up to 240. So we've now got Rust HDRP backport running, working as expected. That ground looks really funky. What on earth is happening here? Um, but anyways, ignoring that funky ground, this is the official HDRP backport branch. Things should be a whole bunch more crisp when you're looking at them. And of course, you can basically play as you usually would. As for server mods and things like that, I'm not too sure. I'll do a bit of digging into it and maybe I'll have another video coming out on that sometime soon. But regardless, this is how to set up your own HDRP backport server, as well as actually connect to it and play on it. At this point, your friend should be able to connect as long as they have your correct IP address and you've port forwarded properly as well as allowing the server through your Windows firewall, antivirus firewall, etc, etc, or at least temporarily disabling them. Anyway, that's about it for this video. Everything should be set up properly, you and your friends should be able to join, and of course you'll be able to give yourself server owner, two spawn in items, no clip around, and things like that, or you can continue along the vanilla route and play the game without any cheats of any kind. It all really depends on you. But anyways, that's about it for this video. Thank you for watching. My name's been Techno over here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!